Putin in reactions nuclear. The laws of conservation had boundaries that blur. Energy was given off more than was its share. The equation that he got E equals MC squared. That's right, that's what I got. At the midpoint of the Big Four Conference, the general air of goodwill that marked the opening continues. Russia's leaders still show the energetic amiability that has marked their excursions beyond the Iron Curtain, despite a steadfast refusal to make any concessions to President Eisenhower's proposals for agreement on German reunification and European security. The president, in an effort to break the deadlock, made a precedent-shattering proposal, offering to submit a blueprint of America's entire military establishment to Russia with permission to make authenticating aerial photographs if Russia would do the same. The high point of the conference to date, Ike's action followed an earlier informal incident, which in its way did as much to prove his sincerity and goodwill. Just doing what comes naturally, a habit rare among the world's statesmen, Ike ducked into a toy shop to buy presents for his grandchildren. Incidentally, leaving his startled Secret Service bodyguard behind. The true diplomacy of international friendship in action. Uranium-235 can pick it up and blow. It splits the nucleus into two smaller nuclei. And give off three more neutrons. Just watch those suckers fly. If those neutrons hit more U-235s, ouch! Once a moderator has slowed them down to size, then a chain reaction starts. Things will get real hot. Ow! Put in the control rods if you want that knot. Uh -uh. Just how much we know about the Earth's interior, given that we can only directly observe a tiny fraction of it. When we learn about the layers of the Earth, we are told that the crust is very thin relative to the overall size of the Earth. But that is only on the scale of the rest of the Earth. Relative to the scale of the tools we use to study the Earth, 30 kilometers is a huge distance, and the conditions become terribly harsh quite close to the surface. The deepest mines only go down a few kilometers, and the deepest hole ever drilled is just 12 kilometers deep. And use these waves to determine the location or epicenter of earthquakes deep underground. P waves are longitudinal waves in which the particles move back and forth in the same orientation as the wave's propagation. They are sometimes called push waves because particle motion pushes energy along in the same orientation as the direction the wave moves. S waves, sometimes called shear waves, are transverse waves in which particle motion is at right angles to the direction the wave propagates. This is similar to the motion of a wave along a length of rope that has just been snapped. In addition to helping locate the site of underground earthquakes, movement of these waves through the Earth provides seismologists with information about the composition of the Earth's interior. The longitudinal motion of P waves can pass through solids, liquids, and gases, while the shearing motion of S waves only move through solids. One way they do this is by studying the movement of pressure waves as they travel through the interior of the Earth. This is called seismology. Unlike the surface waves we see moving across the surface of bodies of water, the waves seismologists study move through material. These types of waves are called body waves. They are caused by large explosions, storm activity, meteorite impacts, and earthquakes. The wave actually makes most of the electricity in France. It powers aircraft carriers and also submarines. If not for radioactive waste, it would be the stuff of dreams. I must be dreaming. Visions when you split apart an atom of great size. Hit it hard and get a bunch of small nuclei. what you get when two small nuclei combine. Both give off lots of energy, according to Einstein. That's what I said. Patience.
Today's topic is mutually assured destruction, and the big question for this lecture is, why was the Cold War never a hot war? And as I was writing that, I realized we could actually upgrade this question from a big question to a bigger question, which is, why have major powers not fought a war against each other since 1945? Since the end of World War II, there hasn't really been a major war between two major powers. So what's up with that? Well, one theory is mutually assured destruction, essentially relying on nuclear weapons. And states live in a world of mutually assured destruction if three conditions hold. First, the states are self-preserving, that is, they actively don't want to die or something crazy like that. Second, both states have large stockpiles of nuclear weapons. And three, each state has a secure second strike, and that is to say no state can achieve a splendid first strike. So going in order here, step one, pretty obvious, right? In order to actually have states doing sensible things, you need to have states actually actively wanting to do sensible things like not dying. Energy for everyone. Hydrogen has isotopes like deuterium. When they come together, they can make a helium. That's right. The process does create lots of energy from mass. But to make this sucker work, it must be hotter than a gas. Ow, ow, ooh, ooh, ha, ha, ha. Nuclei have protons and are thus positive charge. So they repel each other. Especially when they're large. Hey, watch it. So to get the nuclei to come together and have fun, <laughs> you will need high temperature and pressure like the sun. The temperature's so hot that it's in the plasma state. Uh -huh. Everything plasma touches in an instant deflagrates. You need to keep it bottled inside strong magnetic fields So more energy is used than we can get in useful yields That stinks! Visions when you split apart an atom of great size Whoa. Hit it hard and get a bunch of smaller nuclei oh, yeah. Fusion's what you get when two small nuclei combine <laughs> And both will be the future for the power of mankind And both will be the future for the power of mankind Hey, welcome to class 10! So, I hope you're having a good day and everything is fine now, we'll continue with the session, open to page 161, Science and Hope of Survival. Science and Hope of Survival. It's about a scientist who was seismology, who knows seismology. So you must have saw in the session, okay? It's for, his name is Kellis Boro. Okay, let's borrow. Now, science and the hope of survival. Go through the session, the reading, same way. After that, follow the reading, then read along with the session. After that, read on your own. That is very important. Now, points to ponder. If you know these points, you will be able to answer the questions. So, the points to ponder is very important. Okay? So these are the main important points. This will come, they will ask questions. So the first point is, you have to understand that Keres Rock was in Geneva, Moscow. Geneva is in Moscow. In 1960, you have to remember that, researching the theory, theory of simic waves, simic wave tremors which were generated by earthquakes, which were generated by earthquakes. So whenever there's an earthquake, they used to have a gadget where they know the density of the waves. You can see, I've shown in the video examples. After that, you have to remember that the Russian president of the Academy of Science invited the scientists to Moscow. 
Now the reason why they invite them, so you must also end the session, I'm giving the session at the, the beginning, how, why they invite them, these scientists there. At that point in time, every child, every human being on this planet, so you have to write this, were under threat of nuclear weapons, were under threat of nuclear weapons and were under threat of destruction. Till now we are still under that threat, okay? Now more nations have the nuclear power, more of the nations. Many more nations. India is also a nuclear power. Pakistan is also a nuclear power country. Everyone. China is all the more. Okay? The three powers of the world, UK, US, USSR, met behind closed doors. After the Cold War, after the Cold War, the three powers, you can read there, 1945, what happened after the Cold War. Okay? The three powers, they met behind closed doors. They knew the destruction, the threat of mutually assured destruction, mutually assured destruction man, you have to remember this, it's very important in the subject, okay, it's a very important, point, man, very important acronym, okay was the only threat protecting them from a common fatal fate. Was the only threat protecting them from a thing. So without this treaty, without this agreement, you can see what I, the way I'm doing. It's not going to happen. Now, it turned out a problem between natural tremors and explosion. Natural tremors and explosion. So the solution for the scientists to find was NTB. NTB is nuclear test ban. So you must understand this. They may ask you in the question. So the questions are there. NTB means nuclear test ban. You can see how it's going on the screen. Okay. After that is there is hope for survival as long as there is science that gives us a head start in many fields like antibiotics, electronics, biotech technology, pharmaceutical industry and so on. So you see in every industry, everywhere there is science. Science has brought a lot of improvement to a certain extent. Science is also destructive. That is what the author is trying to say. So this is all important points to ponder. You learn these points, you can pass only by learning these points. And then how to learn the keywords to the questions. That is most important. I have already told you, 2020 batch. I am not there, but you have to give good marks. I will ask the HM for the marks. People trained in theological physics are headhunters by financial institutes. People trained in theological physics. Theological physics are headhunters. So you saw how I have given in the video. This is also very important. All these points are very important. You have to know it by memory, by heart, with the spellings. Science is neither the beginning nor the end. It's neither the beginning nor the end. Then he also says, if used judicially, it is an indispensable guardian and caretaker. If you use science properly, it is an indispensable guardian. It can help mankind. At the same time, it can destroy mankind. So take that. So we say, he also says, you have to remember this point, that Kevin also, also says that scientists don't earn much money like, in a, like a doctor, like an engineer, like a software engineer. The scientists actually don't earn any money because they're very curious. They look for discovery. Once they discover something, then only something happens. Then there are many financial institutions Many financial institutions who are ready to uh, finance their projects, stuff like that happens. So you know that. So these are all the main points. Try to follow the main points. Here are some questions going through. Follow all the questions that are going through. Because you must understand the question, then you have to understand the key point. By writing long sentences will not help. The key point to the questions you must understand. The key point to the questions. After that, you have one poetry and one supplementary, which I will send the videos to the concerned person, and you continue.
any help they can contact me have a nice day and goodbye